Hey, it's Chad. Uh, just got back from a 4,500 mile ride up to the, through the New England states and the Northeast states to Madawaska, uh, Maine, the one of the four corners of the U.S. But uh, today we'll be changing brakes. We're pretty much shot, so stick around. Well, I'm lucky enough to be back here at my brother-in-law's and, and sister's place, and they're letting me use their garage again, so it's way better than doing this out in the field. I've done that many times, too. So the plan today is uh, I'm going to uh, pull the back tire, change the rear brakes, and clean the chain. So um, here we go. All right, uh, like I said before, my bike doesn't have a center stand, so I use the the pit bull and if you watch some other videos i talk about how you got to sort of cock it sideways to keep it from sliding off and falling falling off the, the bike or dropping the bike so <clears throat> i've gotten pretty good at this and, and usually when I, I i got a little confidence in it but i've had it fall on me twice and, and it made me nervous so i still get a little nervous but i do have confidence in it now now that i figured it out so let me get on uh, I'm trying something a little different. I'm wearing a GoPro on my, my head, so I don't know if it's gonna, you'll be able to see what I'm doing a little better or not. And, uh, but the reason that this pit bull uh, causes it to tip over, and it's happened to me a couple of times, is right here, if you can see, and I hope the GoPro's pointing at it, you've got a pretty flat spot there. And then this part of the swing arm slopes way up. All right, and then, Coming over here to the other side, you got to, the swing arm is flat all the pretty much the entire way. So it's like one side when you set this in, this side won't go anywhere. It, it's pretty level. But then you come back over here and say you got you got it set in there. If it just wiggles and gets to there, <clears throat> then the bike will slide down, tilt, and it's fall it's fell over. And I've had that happen to me uh, once when I already had the wheel off. I was wiggling around on the bike too much, my fault, and caused it to fall. So hopefully that don't happen this time. All right, I, I can't tell you how many tires I've changed on this bike and how many times I've had this rear wheel off, but it's second nature now. So pretty much all we're gonna need for this job is a 34 millimeter socket. Uh, T45 Torx bit Ratchet And that'll be for setting the torque back uh, And we'll need a ratchet strap Just to make it easier So let's get started First thing I'm going to do Is loosen the axle nut Or actually remove it washer now I'm going to back off the chain tensioners all right then I was pushing the axle out holding up on the, the wheel as I'm doing it you got it the axles out I should have already had something set here to lay this stuff on pull out the chain tensioner guides and what I should have done and I didn't was go ahead and take the, the chain off but it's all right and then I just slide it out and done pretty simple and then we'll change these brake pads so we'll start to we'll pull these brake pads out first thing you do is there's a, a pin right here you pull it out I'd already pulled it out and I just laid it in there to show you what it was I jumped the gun a little bit 
Um, I'm trying to get this on my head to where you can see what I'm doing. Uh, and somebody once told me in a comment that I'm too quick with my movements and the, the camera sort of, you know, moves too fast, so I'm trying to slow it down. Okay, but anyway, you pull that pin, it's a keeper pin, and use a punch, which this is a Allen wrench, and tap it out. There we go. There's the pin. I'm going to set it with the keeper so I don't lose it. Here's my pads. As you can see, the warden really, really thin. So, let's get the new ones. As you can see, it's quite a bit of difference, huh? So, that's, this is so much of a difference that I'm probably going to have to push in the uh, the piston. But that's really no big deal. But uh, there is so much uh, piston sticking out where the pads are worn so much. And I, you can tell because my brake fluid is already really low. And uh, I knew that was coming. That's why I didn't add brake fluid. I knew it was going to be changing the pads. So, what I'm going to do... You just take the cap off of the master, uh, off the rear master cylinder, or reservoir, I mean. And the way this bike's made, you pretty much have to take it off to do that. And I'm taking it off so that when I push in that piston off of the, the brake caliper, then the fluid has somewhere to go, and it, it should return back into here. So... Take it off and set it right there. And hopefully I don't push too much out and it run out on the, the ground. So, all right, let me go back there and mesh in the, the brake caliper. What I'll no normally do is I take an old brake pad, if you can see it, and then uh, I just stick it in here for something to pry against. Then I'll take a screwdriver and just push the piston back in you can see it's going in. I'm going to look at the master cylinder, make sure I'm not going to... The master cylinder's there, I can see it. I don't want to push all the fluid out. Right. Before I put the pads in, if you can see this pin right here, there's the little hole that the, the cotter pin goes in to keep it in. And this is like a little compression sleeve that, that when you push it in, it, it'll swell up and, and hold the pin in. But I want to make sure that hole is where I can get the pin in it without having to turn it. So, I'm going to start with the hole, put it in my slot, line it up, good. This is hard trying to hold my head still for the GoPro and work, but I think we got it. Okay, there's the pin, the pin hole, I mean. Right, got it started. Now, I'm going to tap that in a little bit. See the hole. All right. I can barely see the pinhole starting to come out. So a little bit more. Just a little. I think I can get it in right there. And, uh, Make sure the brakes are back in the, the grooves. Sometimes it's hard to get in there if you knock them out like I just did. So we'll get them in there. Put the pin in and ready to go back with it. All right, the, the way I clean the chain, and I use this method in, most of the time because I'm on the road and I don't have the luxury of a garage, but uh, all I do is I carry simple green in a little water bottle. And I've made, got two tops and one lid, I poked a hole in it so I have something I can just, you know, splash it on the chain. I just use a change brush and go to scrubbing it. So, um, 
after I got it good and clean, I wipe it down, dry it off, and then I use uh, chain wax or whatever you prefer. <laughs> but uh, all right, this will take a little while, so catch you in a minute. All right, I uh, got the chain cleaned uh, with the brush and simple green, and before I dry it off, there's another thing I usually like to do, and I learned that the hard way too, because when you go to tighten your chain back up, if there's still some grit down in there between the O-ring and, and the links themselves, then it'll wear out, it'll, it'll come out or build up more as you're riding, and your chain will be loose the next day or too tight. So I make sure every link is good and loose, you know, and uh, before I, I lube it up. So what I usually do is I'll take a, a shop towel or a rag, preferably, and I just fill it full of Simple Green. Like, I mean, see me. I just poured Simple Green all in it. And then I take the chain, if you can see it, and I just work every link. Let me see if I can show you. I just take the chain and I use both hands and I just work every link back and forth. And what that does, what I found that it works for me is the simple green that's on the rag, you can already see that one's way floppier than it was, way looser. So it still had a little bit of grit down in there. So I use that rag soaked with simple green and just work every link all the way around and then I'll wipe it down clean. So still more work to go. All right, got the chain done. Um, Got it cleaned and well lubed, so we're ready to reassemble. All right. One other thing that, that I found makes a big difference, and, and the, the longer you go before pulling the rear wheel, the worse this gets. Gunk gets built up in here and in here, so you're better off to save a little time, a little struggle, and pull these out and clean everything up, and then... Uh, the book calls for a silicone lubricant so i'm going to do that first instead of fighting this thing it looks pretty gummy so let me get that cleaned up all right we're ready to go back with it now so one thing i forgot is before you start this unhook that speed sensor uh, mine i really didn't have to because i've screwed it up so bad uh, i had it out one time and it uh, uh, ground against the wheel and wore down pretty bad it still works so i'm not fooling changing it yet. all right but when you go back with new brakes and this happened to me once before and that's how i ended up being in the brake pad um and breaking it make sure that you have the the outside brake pad is close to to the edge of the the caliper right here because if, if a lot of times if your brakes are too thin this collapses, which pushes this brake pad in too much, and you don't really have the shelf for it to sit on. And this sticks way back behind it, and you're fighting your uh, brake disc going in on an angle. So you want to make sure that it's out far enough. And mine looks like it is, but it might not be. I might have to pinch this. You squeeze these two parts apart and push the top outward or inward and that'll give you a little more play. I'm gonna try it right here, um, but if you have to fight it, just go ahead and drop it back out and start over and collapse this in some. All right, here we go. Everything's cleaned up, lubed, and we're ready to go back with it. So make sure you get these spacers in. They fall out all the time going up. And then double check, triple check, that's happened to me several times too so and like i said if you watch my other videos you saw my ratchet strap trick um took me forever to get smart enough to do this but it's like having a second person helping you and i tie these instead of just hooking them because a lot of times if you hook them they slide down the the bars and take your time with it and I, I found out that a lot of these steps and I'll probably get criticized some bad nasty comments uh, you can get away with not doing all that cleaning and lubricating so many times but uh, 
Just come back to bite me in the butt. Just one click at a time. Everything's going up nicely. All right. Now. Put my chain guys back in. And just my luck, it's starting to rain. All right, just my luck. <clears throat> Got a rain shower coming in. Instead of pulling the bike in the garage, I left the butt end sticking out. So I'm gonna wait this out and then finish it up. Be right back. All right, rain backed off, but I'm an amateur, so my uh, iPhone died, so I can't see what my head camera's looking at. <laughs> so I'm just gonna use this one to finish this thing up right quick before another rain hits. All right. Where I left off, I think I was jacking that up and getting the axle started in. Everything seems to be going pretty smooth. I'm taking my time with it. Um, get that out of the way. Then push the axle in. And line this up. Looks like I'm a little high. Make sure that it's lined up to your axle catch push it on in make sure the little washers on your chain adjustment is outside of that groove both of them everything looks good so time to tighten it up all right since uh, I pushed the, the brake pads in on the, the master cylinder and the reservoir is over almost ready to overflow <clears throat> uh, with brake fluid so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the chain on just sort of pull it back a little bit and then uh, you know, <laughs> can't put it on until I take this off so. alright took off the ratchet strap run my chain up there I'm just going to pull it back a little bit I'm not worrying about it being squared up or anything because all I'm going to do right now is I'm going to tighten this, the wheel up and then I'm going to pump the brakes out so it'll suck some of that out of the reservoir back into the system and then I'll be able to uh, either suck more out of the reservoir uh, or uh, hopefully it'll be right on it. Like I said, this is just temporary tighten it up because I know I'm going to go back and adjust my chain. So, all right, reservoir dropped a little bit, but I think I'm going to, have to pull a little bit out of there. Sort of sucks. Normally, what I'll do is I, I'll take a syringe and just draw a little bit out, uh, but in this case, I don't have a syringe, so I'll take a clean paper towel and just let it absorb some of it. Again, I'm sure I'm going to get some critique for it. But that's all it took. That one little dab. And I would say some people will say, well, why aren't you bleeding your brakes? And I will if I need to, but there shouldn't be any air gotten in the system. There was fluid in the reservoir, fluid in the lines, fluid in the caliper, so it should be good. But if it does feel soft once I get going, then I'll stop and bleed them. Next time I'm gonna change the fluid. All right. All right, we got the wheel sensor back in. Uh, brake fluid reservoir is mounted. Everything's tightened up. So what I'm going to do now is uh, drop it off the stand, uh, loosen the axle nut again, and then adjust the chain. 
and all it's going to be is making sure the wheel's straight by lining up equal amount of marks on your chain tension guide on both sides and setting the slack which is around 40 millimeters but um, that should be it Okay, it's about two and a half marks on each side, which was uh, pretty much what it was before I started this project, which tells me my chain was pretty clean. So, tighten axle nut, uh, 100 newton meters, and... All right. Job done. <clears throat> it's starting to get really hot and humid here, so finish it right in time. It really didn't take that long. Went through a lot of little extra steps because, uh, like I said, I learned from experience that taking shortcuts comes back. It might work out for you two or three times, but it comes back to bite you in the butt. Uh, so. Everybody has their own way of doing things, I guess, but that's mine. Hope it helps. Um, have safe riding and uh, great adventures. So, thanks for watching. Later.